Have you broken 700 on the reading section or on the math section of the SAT? And are you wondering now what? If so, in this video, I'm gonna give you guys tips specific to high scores. How do you make sure that you hone your prep plan so that you can get past that 1500 mark, past that 1550 or whatever your goal is? My name is Brooke. I've been coaching the SAT and the ACT for over a decade and a half. I've helped coach students to perfect scores on the SAT and the ACT. And top scorers are one of the cohorts of people that I work with most often. So you guys are kind of my bread and butter. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I do as a tutor to try to help get those students in line so that they can get the highest score possible. I'm going to go through one section at a time. The first place I'm going to start is the math section. Most people cream the math first. This is usually the first frontier when it comes to like getting to that 800. Nine times as many people score perfectly on the SAT math section as the SAT reading section. So yeah, this is usually a, a mountain most of you guys can climb if you want to put yourselves to it. The most important thing for high scorers on math is targeting. You know when you're getting like a 500 on the math, you pretty much need to learn everything. You could go buy a book on the internet and just do it front to back and you'd be fine because you kind of need to learn everything but you are no longer in that category. If you're scoring over a 700, you really wanna make sure that you target exactly what you need to work on and you figure out what it is that you need to work on. And so my best advice for doing that is first off, start with real tests. Don't take Princeton review tests. Don't take Kaplan tests. They are not good for you and your brain cells and getting higher scores on the SAT in the same way that real tests are. They just won't be as good. Now, obviously, if you've exhausted every real test, you've exhausted every real test, you know, and you gotta do what you gotta do. But if you're scoring high, those last few nuanced, really hard questions, the real tests are gonna be the best. So if you want real practice tests, there's tests one through 10 from the College Board. There is also something called QAS tests that you guys should be aware of. You can get those from a brother, sister, cousin, somebody who took the SAT prior and has that booklet sitting around the house or maybe has their SAT login if it's your sibling and you can log into their course and like do the test online. You might find PSAT papers warning on the math with PSATs. The PSAT is much easier on the math because it doesn't include that advanced algebra that the SAT is expecting you to have. So be careful if you're prepping with PSAT to get a higher score on the math. If you're at about a 700 though and you're a freshman or a sophomore, you're not taking the SAT for a year or two and this is the long game, start with the PSAT because the math is easier there if you're gonna be using real materials. In terms of targeting, what you need to do, you take these tests and then you go over the test and then you figure out what category does this particular element on the test correspond to. Now, Khan Academy does some automatic integration where they will tell you kind of what areas you need to work on based on what you missed on the test. Our online course also does this and then we'll push you to the lessons that correspond to what you missed. So if you take like test eight or whatever from the college board, you can enter it into our online course. And then we will tell you what that area is, but if you don't have that, you can try to figure it out on your own. Get some kind of SAT math book if you're not gonna get our online course where you can drill down similar kinds of problems to what you missed. And that is your best spend of time because you wanna target what you missed. Now I know some of you are saying, well, I'm toward the top of the score range and I'm only really making careless errors. What I say about careless errors is oftentimes the same kinds of careless errors rear their heads in the same kinds of problems. If you're missing quadratic algebra problems because you had to do a bunch of algebra, you're probably just not that clean in algebra and you need to brush up your rustiness and get better at being precise and distributing your negatives. So do more of the same problem type right? It still can be helpful. The other thing that I'm going to say is there's particular areas on the test that tend to not be covered in regular math class as much. And a lot of times my top scorers will miss these questions and they don't show up on every test. So I'm going to go through that list really quickly and make sure if you are a top scorer, you know how to approach these kinds of questions. Number one, box and whisker plots. Make sure you know what those are and how they work. Quadratic and exponential word problems. Sometimes those exponential word problems where like the T isn't just T, right, in the equation. That's the exponent. It's like T over 12 or something like that. A lot of students get screwed up on those funky quadratic word problems, data inferences and data collection and conclusions. These are really easy questions, but you don't usually cover it in math class unless you took stats. So make sure you're familiar with them. Standard deviation, you just have to know the basics. You don't have to know how to specifically calculate it, but you do need to understand how it works and what it is. Polynomial factors and graphs, clever quadratic questions sometimes, and then interpreting linear functions. You guys tend to get these right, but sometimes you take forever. So make sure that you know hacks or ways to approach them that are fast. But above all, identify what you miss and drill, drill, drill. Okay, awesome. Writing language, let's talk about this section. At this point, you guys probably know most of your grammar if you're getting a 700 plus, assuming that a good portion of that is coming from the writing and language section and it's not all reading points. Rhetorical strategy is kind of where it's at for most of my students that are higher scorers. 
you guys are missing questions like placement questions, those keep delete questions, those which of the following is the best way to combine the sentences, which should the author choose to put here, transitions, conclusions, like where should I put whole sentences or transition words, which one is the most nuanced kind of transition word, diction, idiomatic usage, and comparisons. That pretty much covers what the top scorers are missing. Again, you can find a way to drill down whichever of these areas that you're missing. Our online course is one way to do it. You can also get books from people like Erica Meltzer and go over what you've missed there. One of the things that I've learned from doing this test and how it's different from the old SAT is that you really have to understand the entire framework of the passage, meaning what's the thesis of the passage? What's the title of the passage? What's the main idea? What's the topic sentence of the paragraph that I'm dealing with right now? What's the topic sentence of the next paragraph? What's the transitional sentence between this paragraph and the next one? You've got to really understand the outline and the framework of what you're reading. Treat it like reading comprehension or treat it as if you're analyzing this and you need to turn all of these paragraphs into an outline, right? What's the outline that would have created this passage? If you can think in that way, think in terms of framework, that will save you. I know it's counterintuitive and it feels like it's going to take you longer and you're worried about time, but it's not because those hard questions aren't going to feel so hard. You're going to get them and you're going to know you're right. If you don't know you're right, you need to raise the bar on this section. If you feel like you're guessing, you're guessing. You can't guess. You need to know you're right. And the way you know you're right is you zoom out, you read more, you read context. You guys need to look for parallel structure. You need to say, okay, if this topic sentence says there are many ways students can get involved, then that paragraph should list out at least two ways students can get involved. If it doesn't and you have a keep or delete sentence and that keep sentence is another way students can get involved, guess what? You really need it, don't you? So pay attention so you can add things in. Reading. Okay, so let's talk about the reading section. Arguably and statistically, the reading section of the SAT is the hardest section of the test. More people mess up on the reading than any other section. What I will also say is for whatever reason, this section is much harder to improve on if you're just using a book or you're just, you know, prepping on your own or self-prepping. This is the last frontier. This is what I have more students that I tutor in than anything else. My number one tip here is scope of the question. When I have high scorers that are missing this, the number one thing that they screw up is the scope of the question. What do I mean by that? They don't focus enough on the question. You guys mentally juggle when you do multiple choice. You take the passage, you take the answer choices, you take the question, and you juggle them all in your brain at the same time. And then you freak out and like get nervous and then try to figure out what works and shove it together and make it match. Focus on the question. What is the scope of the question? What is the question asking about? Make sure you get that down. If you're not in the scope of the question, you're not putting the right answer. And oftentimes things are true, but they're not right. And those are really hard questions because the passage totally says what you put, but that doesn't mean it answers the question. So make sure you're answering the question. Make sure you understand what is the scope of the question. What are we talking about? What's the topic at hand? Figure that out first, and that hopefully will clear up 20 or 30 points in your score. Next, vibe matters. Logic hopping is really dangerous. What I mean by that is look at words individually. Ask yourself what the connotation is. Look at sort of the passage. What's the kind of vibe of the passage? Are they mad? Are they angry? Are they happy? Are they excited about this scientific revolution, right? And that vibe should translate to the answer choices. If the answer choices feel negative and the passage is positive, even if literally they seem to align, if it feels off, you have to trust your emotions. This is the most emotional test I've ever seen in my life when it comes to standardized testing. So trust your emotions. If something feels off, it's probably off. And be very wary. And this is true on the hardest questions. The hardest questions involve some feeling a lot of the time. So that's something that you have to kind of crack and figure out. You have to slow think the hardest questions. Another tip for my top scorers. A lot of times you guys are thinking fast. You can't think fast or you will screw these up. You have to do a second pass. You have to dig in deep. You have to get it down to those best two, which is I know where you guys are if you're getting 700s. You get it down to the best two and then you choose the wrong one. But you have to wrestle through this slow thinking process. And that's expected. This is a marathon. It's never going to feel easy. It's never going to feel easy and snappy like the, the writing and the math will feel. You will always be working hard and it is exhausting. So expect to be exhausted. Expect that you're going to have to slow thing the hardest questions. Expect that you're gonna to have to fight to the end. You also need to really kind of figure out the preference of the test and the kinds of details the College Board is gonna trick you with so that you're ready for them. I call these flags on our online course, but you know, it could be things like time or people, right? Check your people. The person in the answer choice might be wrong. It might say the narrator and it was the protagonist. Different people and you totally picked it thinking you were right, but you fast thought it. 
and you didn't realize, oh, wait, that's not the right person. So there's all kinds of little flags, little ways that the College Board trips you up. You want to figure out what those little ways are, make a list of them, be aware of them, and then you can kind of be on guard when you see that kind of information. You're ready for it. You're ready to double check it. Cool. So if all else fails, the other thing that I have to say on really hard questions is zoom out. What aligns most with the vibe of the passage as a whole? What seems to be in line with the main idea or the main themes? That's going to like bring you back and stop taking everything so seriously and just ask yourself what makes the most sense. Very rarely, but it happened in March of this year. There are questions on the SAT where there's no really great evidence or there's no really clear evidence. Maybe there's a tiny bit where maybe that's the evidence, but I'm not sure if that's the evidence. And sometimes in those cases, just asking yourself what makes sense, what's logical, zooming out a little bit, relaxing a little bit, stop being so trapped in the test, you know, step back from the test, figure out what makes sense, just be normal and logical. And that can kind of get you home and get you the right answer. If there's really, really tough questions, these last few questions right before that perfect score. And finally, last tip, the biggest thing that students screw up when you guys are in these high scores ranges is your pacing on test day. So make sure you're finding your pacing plan and whether you're doing passages out of order and kind of your strategy because those refinements are going to help you when you're down to those last few points. I hope you guys enjoyed this and found it helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. We have lots more tips for free. We also have private tutoring resources on our website as well as an online course for the SAT you guys can check out. Thumbs up if you like this video in any case, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck on your SAT.